right, so picking up where we left off, I suppose. Um, wait for it, I suppose, just be patient. There it is. All right, so what we were saying on that previous slide, uh, we we're really hitting on the on the equations themselves. So uh, this is our equation once again for the horizontal because the x squared term is the positive or it's coming first. Over here with the y squared term is coming first or, or that's the positive aspect. So that's going to be our vertical. Now first thing that I want to draw your attention to is that if you were to flip back in your notes and look at the, all of the equations for ellipses compared to all of the equations for the hyperbolas, you're going to notice that they're identical. They're exactly the same. So how in the world could that be? Well, it's because all of the parts are the same. All of the variables are the same, meaning that just like an ellipse, we said that hyperbolas, they have a center point, they have vertices, they have foci, they have all, all of that stuff, okay? It's still, still going to be present. Not only are they present, but that distance from the center to a vertex, just like in an ellipse, same with the, same with the uh, hyperbola, center to vertex, that's A. Center to focus, or one of, one of your foci, that's C. The difference here, now that we're talking about hyperbolas, which one's going to be larger? Again, here's my center point. Here's a vertex, and there's the focus. Which one's always going to be larger when we're talking about a hyperbola? Is A going to be larger, or is C going to be larger? C is going to be larger. That's what makes a hyperbola a hyperbola is that the foci are outside of the vertices. That's why it's shaped the way that it is. That's why we're opening to the left and to the right. Again, whereas with an ellipse, the foci were in the interior. That's why it was an enclosed figure, right? So, hi Hudson. Thank you. All right, so um, maybe the first thing that I'd encourage you to do, maybe I got a little ambitious here. Um, I would maybe separate these, something like that. I don't want you to think that what I have down here, uh, calling it standard info, I don't want you to think that it's working in columns and that only applies for horizontal. That That's what is going to work all the way across. Okay. So <clears throat> um, are there any questions, again, with this initial stuff? Again, we haven't gotten the standard info yet. We'll get there here in a minute. But when, it, when we're looking at the horizontal and the vertical, we understand, number one, how to decipher which one we, which one is which, right? Is x squared positive or is, is y squared positive? That's going to be what the, the question that I want you to ask yourself when we're determining horizontal or vertical. Okay. Um, the rest of these, like I said, the if the center point is h k, foci for a horizontal, it's going to be h plus or minus c comma k. Well, again, yes, you're welcome to memorize formulas, but let's think of it this way: that if it's horizontal, how do I get from center to to foci? Well, I'm going to move to the left and to the right c units, whatever that is. Equation base, that's going to look like h plus or minus c comma k. All right. If this were vertical, all right, now my foci are going to be up and down from center. And for that reason, I'm going to add c to go up. I'm going to subtract c to go down. Same story with the vertices. It's just not c. Now it's a. So I'm going to move, if it's horizontal, to the left and to the right a units. It's vertical, left, or excuse me, up and down a units. Um, and we'll get there. We haven't talked about B yet. <clears throat> just give me a second. That's going to be a big deal when we start talking about asymptotes. And we're about to do that here in a moment. So um, if we were to kind of hit the pause button here and now, are we feeling good with the information that we've discussed so far about the hyperbolas? So just to be clear, like absolutely no acknowledgement to that question. That means good, right? Okay. There, I got a few. I got a few nods and thumbs ups. All right. All right. So I want to go a little bit larger here. All right, so guys, um, we do have just like, just like an ellipse, we do have a, a, a kind of a secondary equation that we talked about. Okay, what I mean is that a, b, and c are very closely related. And if we were to look back at the standard equations, uh, h, k, a, and b are absolutely present in those equations. C is not, but as we just discussed, if we were interested in, in figuring out where our foci are located. We better know c, right? So with that in mind. Sometimes we're going to, just like with the ellipses, sometimes we're going to have uh, enough information to answer two and we want the third. Meaning, maybe we know A and B, but we need to figure out C. Or maybe we know A and C, we need to figure out B. Maybe we know B and C. Again, you know where I'm going with this. So with an ellipse, we said that that standard equation was that C squared was equal to A squared minus B squared. But as we are looking at here, 
Once we have a hyperbola, you're going to notice that that equation, it's very similar but slightly different. What's the difference now? Yeah, it's an addition problem, not a subtraction problem. So again, we're going to say that the way that we're going to get there, that secondary equation, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Anybody know what's going on? Bloody nose. All right. Who punched Emily? Jenny? No? Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot. I almost forgot. William, everything's Will's fault. Yeah. <laughs> almost forgot. All right. Anyway, uh, so guys, getting back to this, though. Um, the biggest mistake, the, the biggest mistake that, uh, that students make moving forward. Uh, once we're not just working, like today we're, we're going to have the, I don't know if luxury is the right word, but we're only going to work with hyperbola. So I don't anticipate this being a problem today. Where it potentially could be a problem is what if this problem is a hyperbola, next problem is an ellipse, back to a hyperbola. Are we going to be able to adjust this equation each and every time? So it's a stupid way to remember it, but it, it works. Um, if we think about it, <clears throat> with the hyperbola. It's a subtraction problem in the standard equation. It's an addition problem in the secondary equation. Isn't that going to be the exact flip when, when we're talking about the ellipse? The ellipse, the standard equation is going to be addition. The secondary equation is going to be subtraction. So as long as we remember that one's addition, one's subtraction, that's, that's been the way that I've encouraged students to remember it in the past. Um, but uh, again, we can, we can discuss that uh, a little bit more in the future. Yes, Ben? Why did it change? So the it goes back to that notion that now C is larger than A. Yeah, so it just has to do with the different measurements and how that, I mean, this is based off of Pythagorean theorem for sure. Um, but uh, the, the just kind of that fact that A, B, and C, while they still are the same measurements in terms of from what to what, uh, it's, it, it's going to be altered now in terms of which is your longest side and which, you know, things like that. So. Um, it's just manipulating Pythagorean theorem without changing the name of the variables to, to be more specific. But yeah. All right, so guys, here's the deal. When we talk about when we talk about hyperbolas, again, I know that we've kind of been, I don't know, sidestepping some of this a little bit, but we're going to have a center point. We're going to have vertices that are A units away. We're going to have foci that are C units away. That's going to help to sketch our, our picture. But if we wanted to get a more accurate sketch, which we of course do, we need to realize that we're going to have two asymptotes that are going to intersect at the center point. Okay, So our asymptotes are going to be the same ratios, just a plus or minus version. What I mean by that is that if this first asymptote, we say, is three halves, then the other asymptote is going to be negative three halves. Right? So we, we never have to worry about the numbers changing. It's just that one's positive, one's negative. So um, the way that we're going to get there is we're going to be creating a ratio with A and B. So if we have a vertical, like what you see over here, if we have a vertical hyperbola, do we agree that the distance from center to vertex isn't that A? Right? Now, we haven't talked much about B yet, but B is going to be... Remember, if this were an ellipse, it is not, but if this were an ellipse, we'd say that that minor axis is perpendicular to the major axis. Okay, well, we're going to introduce here very soon a new uh, new term that we're not calling it the minor axis, we're calling it the conjugate axis, and that's that's going to be from end point to end point, if you will. So that's going to be 2B. So the way that we're going to get there is that we're going to go from center point, B units out. But we don't really care about the conjugate axis. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Like that, That's not a physical aspect of our graph. What we do care about is whatever that distance is that we went over B, that's going to be my rise, that's going to be my run. We now know that my slope is going to be A over B, plus or minus A over B. Because if here we're going up A, right B, we just as easily could have gone down A, right B to figure out the slope of the, of, of the negative asymptote. All right? So once again, if 
in when we have a vertical hyperbola, this is going to be the equation that we're going to be talking about. Y minus K is equal to plus or minus A over B times the quantity X minus H. Somebody remember what we call that? It's definitely not slope-intercept form. What do we call that? It's written on the paper. This is point-slope, isn't it? Okay, so if this is point-slope, why do you suppose, staying away from the, uh, from the answer of, well, it's pre-calc, so we just have to make everything harder than it needs to be. But why do you suppose we're encouraging point-slope form instead of slope-intercept form? Okay, well, let's think of it this way. Do I really care where we're crossing the y-axis with those asymptotes? Do I really care where they cross? Yeah, that's kind of a big deal. That's the center point of the entire hyperbola. They're crossing. So as long as we know that center point, there's your point. The two things that you have to know in order to accurately write an equation in point-slope form is you have to know a point that's on the line, any point on the line, and the slope. So if we know the center point, we already have the point, and we can figure out the slope. So I know it may not seem like it because, again, I'm, guys, I'm, a, I'm a math teacher, and I would say the exact same thing, that I feel more, conf more confident, comfortable when the equation's in slope-intercept form because that's what we use the majority of the time. Vast majority of the time, things are in slope-intercept form. But this is a situation where it's actually going to be significantly easier for us to use, just utilize point-slope form. So for a lot of us, the biggest challenge is going to be remembering, all right, gosh, what was that point-slope form again? Uh, luckily, most of this hasn't changed. Y minus K. Haven't we said all along K is always the amount that we're subtracting from Y? Is equal to plus or minus AB? A over B, excuse me. That's going to be our, our slope uh, times quantity X minus H. So again, H is still the amount being subtracted from the X term. All right? You okay? Yeah, I'm done. All right. So um, this is the situation, like we said, if and when we have a vertical. I know I made a giant mess out of that. But we said that if you have a vertical, that's going to lead to a slope being plus or minus A over B. So with an extremely quick and rough sketch, what if we had a horizontal hyperbola? Start looking at something very roughly like this, where we have a center point. Well, can somebody remind me, what is that distance going to be? That's B. Over that distance is going to be A. So do we agree that my slope is going to be not A over B, but my slope is going to be B over A? And if we went in the other direction, that's why we'd have to say, all right, now I guess my slope is going to be plus or minus B over A. So if we just think about it for a moment, I'm going to reassociate for the 10 millionth time that slope is rise over run. And as long as we can just <laughs> remember that that's going to be the case, or more so just... You're not allowed to forget that slope is rise over run. As long as we're still thinking through it that way, we should have a lot of success with, all right, well, am I going up to get to the vertex and then over, or am I going up and then over to get to the vertex again? So, again, that's going to help us to determine uh, what that ratio is going to be. Yes, sir. So that, that's where it's going to tie back to your equation. Remember that one of your denominators is b squared. So that's going to, so the, the whole reason why we have that denominator, why we have one being a squared, the other being b squared, here's what we're talking about, um, is that that's going to help us to build the slopes of our asymptotes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, kind of goes back and we'll actually talk about it a little bit more when we circle back to parabolas, but, uh. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a playoff of that 4P thing, but uh, yeah. All right, so guys, I don't think this is the best approach. This is the way a few years back that we used to talk about uh, the hyperbolas. It, it just reiterates a lot of the equation stuff. I feel like everything on this slide we've already discussed, but um, I don't know. I felt like instead of deleting it, maybe you wanted to read through it again. But uh, I do want to talk a little bit more specifically about the asymptotes. Hopefully, I do a better job of answering Ben's question, but I've got to stop the video here. Uh, we'll start another one here with asymptotes.